to another episode of Fixing War Cry. Um, it's been a while since the last one, which is mainly due to the fact um, that my Microsoft account has had some issues. <clears throat> so anyways, I hope you can forgive me. And let's get right into this one. Today we're taking a look at the Caradron Overlords. So, um, as per usual, let's first have a look at what their issues are. Um, first off, we've got average damage that is pretty low, below average, survivability that is below average, movement that's below average, and um, yeah, abilities that are below average. So <clears throat> already we can tell that there are some major issues with this warband. Let's have a look at them then. <clears throat> so um, as you see at first glance here, there's a lot of fighters with low survivability and with low damage output as well. So basically all the, uh, let's call them elites, all the guys who can fly have very bad damage per point values, um, basically to balance out the flying. Now, why did I say that they are below average in terms of movement? Well, that's because in an average warband, and the ones I've used, um, you will not be using many of these guys. You will uh, have one or two of the flying guys, and then your main core be made out of um, Thunderers and, and Arcanauts, who all have only three inch movement. Um, so I think some of the best models are the Arcanaut of Gatling, um, the one with Pike if you want to go any melee guys, but you don't really need to. Um, then the Thunderer with the big blue gun, um, and then probably the Engine Rigger leader. That's him. He's got some decent combat stats, good damage output, so he's not bad. Um, yeah. So let's have a look at the abilities. They all have one have a double ability which adds one to toughness. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to zoom in here. Um, forgot to do that. There we go. So they all have one ability that adds one to toughness. Um, it's really not great in my opinion. Adding one to toughness, yeah, I don't think you'll ever use that double. Then we've got the double which just works for the um, Skyhook using Skywarden and Engine Rigger. Um, they can basically teleport 23 inches, but only if they are 3 inches away from enemies. So it can get them across the board very quickly. However, it's very limited. You, uh, you can only use it if you're 3 inches away from enemies, so it's not usable as a disengage, only to engage, basically. Which, in my opinion, makes it quite bad, especially since the Guy with Skyhook, if we look at him here, um, where is he? There he is. He has the worst stats out of all of the fighters, so his damage output is atrociously bad. Um, his survivability is not great, so you really don't want to, to put him into combat. You want to get him away from combat, so I, I think this ability is kind of wrong. And then we've got the Thunderer leader. Um, he's got the drill bill that little bird, um, which just allows him to stop one enemy from disengaging. Again, I don't think that's a great ability. Um, I've personally not used this ability once ever, and it's it's present in a couple of warbands, and I don't think it's ever very useful. There's like very few limited cases where you might want to use it, but probably normally not especially on carriage and overlords who do not want to stick in melee and this forces an enemy to be in melee with you. I just don't really see the point. And we've got a triple for the normal thunderers, which is a bonus disengage action. I think that's perfectly fine. That's a very good ability. Because being able to disengage for free and then shooting twice at an enemy can be very valuable. So I think the triple is fine. And we've got a triple for the leaders and um, that's adding one to the attacks characteristics for all friendly units within six inch, and they are adding two if they are within three inch of an objective. Um, honestly, the first part already is great, so only adding one attack for all within six inch is already a great ability. 
with this added bonus of being uh, within three inches of an objective, adding even tw two attacks. Amazing. Really, really good ability here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a plane. I hope you can't, can't hear it. Um, and we've got the Sky Wands. So all the Sky Wands have this quad, which is um, dealing damage equal to the value of the ability. And then um, to all enemies within one inch and then disengaging. It's not bad, but really all enemies within one inch is normally going to be one enemy. So um, you're basically getting a free disengage and a, and a couple of points of damage on an enemy. I don't know if this, this is really worth it. I think for quad that's a very steep price. You could as well, you, like imagine using a rampage, you could disengage for one of your normal, normal actions and then move and attack twice on another enemy or something like that. So. I think uh, the Rampage is a lot better than this. And then we've got, so um, yeah, let's let's have a look at how I would change these abilities to make the entire Warband a lot better. So for a double, I would not straight up add one attack. I think that's very, very strong, probably not fair for a double, but I would allow um, these guys to reroll one attack dice for the next attack action. So. Say you're using that, um, like, whatever, you're shooting at someone and um, you're rolling two dice, three dice, whatever, and then being able to re-roll one for a double, I think that's fair. That's not, it's not as good as Onslaught, of course, but this, this one you could use at range as well, so I think that's quite strong, makes it quite good. Certainly a lot better than the toughness. I think this would be nice. Then we've got... Um, a double for the skyhook again. Um, I would just remove that that uh, thing that says it has to be three inches away from enemies. Just make it a 23 inch teleport. Honestly, if he teleports out of combat, that's perfectly fine in my opinion. Um, only issue with that might be that on some objectives where you have to kill an enemy model, it might be very hard for some other warbands to catch you. So you could change this to um, if more oh sorry more than one inch away. So you could change this to this um, so that you have to basically disengage before you teleport. That could be fine as well. Uh, anyways, I think this would be a lot better than the three inch away thing because. Yeah, that's you're going to be a, in, within three inch of an enemy most of your games, so it's very hard to stay that far away. So I think the teleport would be quite quite useless then. And then we've got the double for the thunder leader, and I would just make it to a straight up net. Um, Twenty inch obviously is a great range for that, um, so I would add a three up. So you'd have to roll a three up on the dice to get. Um, one enemy who cannot move or disengage within 20 inch. Obviously this would be very strong, but keep in mind this is on a leader, so you can, can't spam this ability. Um, I think this would be very fair. And do not forget, this competes with this triple ability because, uh, sorry, with the leader triple ability, which as I said is very strong. So you wouldn't use this every turn because you definitely want to use this sometimes as well. So um, in this case, I think it, this ability, the double, has to be a lot stronger to justify bringing it. And the triple for the Thunderous and for the leader, I would leave as they are. They are good abilities. And then I would change the quad for the Sky Warden to deal the damage to all enemies within three inches. Um, that's a lot better because you will hit more than one enemy in many cases. And I think in that case, um, a quad might be justified where you get more value out of that than out of um, a normal a rampage, maybe. So I think this would help. Now, how would these abilities affect the weakness as well? This double alone would kind of affect the weakness um, in terms of damage output for, for many of these fighters. So this would 
re-rolling attack dice always always re results in uh, increasing your damage. So you're increasing your charges at crits and so on. Uh, probably very good there. Um, then we've got the teleport is improved, so that's good for the movement. It might make the skyhook worth bringing because I don't think he was worth bringing before. Um, then obviously the thunder leader now this ability is a lot better. It, it allows you to pin enemies in place, which in turn kind of addresses the movement issues, because oftentimes its movement can be addressed by limiting enemy movement as well instead of your own. So if it's close, like who gets the objective, well, if you can't get more models there, then you can at least prevent the enemy getting more models there, which could just as well help you as... Um, as, as moving there yourself. So this kind of helps against the low movement of the warband as well. And then we've got this quad, which I think is now at least worth bringing, and is again going to give you an option against horde types. Um, ranged warbands struggle with hordes of enemies because they can swarm them and tie them all up so they can't use their range attacks. So having this on the sky ones could allow you to hit a lot of weaker models at the same time and um, if you get on maybe two quads in a game and you, you're able to hit a couple of eight wound models with that you might be able to take out quite a few so um, I think this could help as well anyways guys um, that's it for today I hope to release another one later this week hopefully on Sunday and this is going to address a completely different topic um, so Stay tuned for that, and uh, otherwise, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.